Hi there, I'm Mike Voigt, and for Advances in Clinical Education, I'm going to review the Stability Mobility Continuum, or a variation of regional interdependence that we talk about. Now, if we have the human body, I'll sort of draw sort of a rudimentary one here. If we sort of think about this, the way the human body is sort of set up, as we've talked about, is that it's alternating layers of stable and mobile joints. Much like what Yonda talked about with a layer concept, with different uh, uh, types of motor units with, with sort of the slow twitch and fast twitch layered on top of one another. Now if we start at the pelvis, and that's a good place to start, or hips, our hips, we have here, should be nice and mobile. Now I'm going to work upwards a little bit here. If our hips are mobile, and I go to my next segment up, which would be right here, and I have my core, my lumbar pelvic region. Lumbar pelvic region should be nice and stable. Now I'm gonna go up one more layer. We're gonna do our trunk, our thoracic spine, so to speak. Thoracic spine should be relatively mobile. That allows us to rotate in space. Now, let's just work up from our thoracic spine a little bit. We have our scapula thoracic articulation. Well, scapula thoracic articulation should be nice and stable here. Now, let's just work out one more joint or two more joints. If scapula thoracic is nice and stable, the next area we have would be glenohumeral joint. Glenohumeral joint's mobile. Allows our arms to move, our humerus to move in space. And I can even move out one more to my elbow joint, a hinge joint that should be nice and stable. Hinge joints tend to be stable. So having said that, if I drop from my hip, which is mobile, down to my knee here, knee should be stable, and I can go to my hind foot and my ankle should be mobile. Now you can say, well, why is all this important? Well, the relative importance of this is what the SFMA as an examination tool, an assessment tool does, is we try to identify the joints that are stable and those that are mobile. For example, let's say hypothetically, a person has a hip problem and the hips are now stable as opposed to mobile. It's inverted, so this is now an S. If I work my way back up, my lumbar pelvic region becomes mobile. My thoracic spine could become stable. I have problems with my scapula thoracic articulation. It now became mobile, which then takes away motion here. This becomes stable. Or if I even drop down, maybe my knee becomes mobile. So the key to our assessment and the whole theoretical basis of what we do with our SFMA is identify the segments, chart them out, find where the problem is, correct the mobility problem, and that this can all flip back into a normal, proper sequencing uh, human body. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed today's episode looking at the stability mob mobility continuum. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, look at the stability mobility continuum, and I forgot to put this here. You now have a happy face because you watched that. Join us again for a future episode as we delve into another aspect of the SF FM. Oh, <laughs> SFMA. I'm out. <laughs>